directory first. Interesting. I wonder what that does. Well, for now, let me just um, get straight to business. So, first of all, upon resizing, that's working. What if I have zero extras? Okay, so that's the Linux problem that Will was telling me about. Um, it appears to be correct here, although it's still lagging, which is not um, not spectacular, but it is what it is. So, what I need to do right now is I've just released a new custom API upgrade, and I want to make sure that I've thoroughly tested all of it. Um, I'll go ahead and show off a little bit of what it can do, right? So that's a new feature. You can just doop, 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 right? So that's kind of cool. That's one keystroke to add that, and you just put a mark here, and boom, it's done. Although technically, you got to make sure you're careful about where you put the mark, because it puts it, you know, right here. It'll have an extra new line, so. That's a little bit fidgety, you can't quite ever get it just right, but that's a cool one. I've also got that and that are built in, so it, that's what all being powered through the custom API. So I'll show you that. Oh, let me kick off a tweet before we get too far into this. Okay, so um, the way the API works, we've got an example of it right here, write increment. Whenever this function is called, um, it gets a buffer. This example code is not spectacular. What I should do is move it around a little bit for future. Um, Okay, that's how I should have written the example code. But anyway, um, it gets a buffer, makes sure that it exists and it's ready. Those are two separate concepts. Um, ready kind of implies exists, but here I'm just checking them both. Um, who knows? Um, maybe I'll loosen that constraint uh, and say that this is you only have to check this and that implies that and then you're good. That'd probably be a good thing to do. But, um, Anyway, uh, then it um, replaces everything in the range, and this getting is getting an active buffer. So this has been tested. Get active buffer appears to work. Gets the active buffer, which is the one you have your click your mouse on. You're like the one that's clicked, so you can type in. Um, and it goes in there and replaces in the range from the file cursor position to the to the file cursor position. So that makes it an insert that text, right? So you just say replace range right here. Um, this text. That's the basic idea. And then here, right, the decrement does the same sort of thing. Um, you know, gets the buffer, writes it out at that position. Then opening the long braces. Okay, that's a different feature I haven't actually showed off. So let me pull up a test case. Say I'm in here and I'm going, look, I want to make a new foo. So now, I don't like it when editors, you type that and it like automatically goes boom and you're right here. Um, or like you do that and then you press enter again and you're right here. Or sometimes you press this and you're already in this situation. 
But I do like the idea of fewer keystrokes to get what you want. So that's control square bracket is what I do. So instead of going, what I normally do is I go, I hit the shift, I hold it, I hit the two brace keys, which goes boom and boom, and then I, you know, enter that twice. Instead, all I do is I hold control and hit that brace key once, and I get the whole thing, right? And what's more, it puts the mark there most of the time so that I can swap to it and put a semicolon if I need to. Ah, so I did interrupt a mid blow stream. I suspected I might have. I didn't, uh, didn't mean to, but... Um, uh, but yeah, it... Um, it all uh, it all works out, I suppose, so long as you didn't uh, cut it too short. Um, anyway, so that's another cool thing it can do is it can insert those uh, curly braces. Now, what I could do is say that I always want the mark to go after the curly braces during the insert, right? So right now it puts it t inserts. This is an example of inserting text and putting the cursor in a specific position, right? It always puts the cursor there, not at the end or wherever it puts it right there. Um, so if I have the mark there though, um, let me put the mark there and I do it, it doesn't it doesn't affect the mark, right? So the only reason the mark has been showing up here a lot is because usually right before I do it, the mark and the cursor are both there. So what I think I want to do is say always put the mark here. I'm gonna add that to this code here. So open long braces. Currently um, doing a set cursor. I want to also do a set mark, uh, command context on the view. I want to go to seek position, um, position plus how many characters are there here? I want one, two, well, one, two, three, I think, maybe four. I think four because um, if I do three, I think that'll put it on the brace, which isn't really what I want. But let's say that that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so now I need what I have to do now is well, first of all, let me. Whoops, whoops, not what I want. Oh shoot, I've overloaded that. Okay, so custom code custom.cpp um, so split vertically is gonna and be an underscore now so I have to shift it okay now I'm going to kill all that that's annoying <coughs> All right, so um, what should I do? I think I'm gonna update my four quarter custom real quick um, because that's really annoying if I can't split it vertically um, or horizontally, I mean. Um, so custom.cpp, custom.cpp, copy and replace. Let's see if it will build. There we go. Okay. So most recently, the one I've the layout I've been trying is putting my build on the top and putting my files here. I think I like this better than on the bottom. Okay, so, ooh, that's weird. This is one of the bugs Miblo is telling me about. So let me put that on the uh, to-do list, bugs. Bouncing when scrolling down. I think that's after I did the page up scrolling stuff. I messed with how scrolling worked a little bit, and so that must have introduced this bug. So I'm gonna say we gotta get to that at some point. Um, there's also the um, 
unmodified command then gets inserted in new view zbug from h and h haven't done that one yet okay Forgot to check that before I released it. Also, um, this was missing, but it should have been there. Um, CLI stuff. Well, let's just get a copy of this. Dude. Okay. So to do is back up in to date, and now I should be able to test um, this thing with the mark there. Boom. Okay, so put the mark in the right spot. So setting the mark looks like it works. Um, <clears throat> So let's see now what um, custom well okay I need to go back to code custom dot h custom dot cpp okay so what have I tested so far uh, set mark has been tested now I've tested um, this and this using set position so let me get back to to do. I'm going to make a temporary test list uh, to keep track of what needs to be tested. Okay. Testing. So things that need testing. We've got this guy. View set cursor. Um, set by position. Check. Set by line character. Those are the two I want to make sure work today. There are other options for setting positions, um, but they're not super useful from the custom API as far as I can tell right now. Um, view set mark. Okay. Um, view set file needs to be tested. Now, from the buffer end, what stuff have I done already? Um, let's see, buffer um, seek delimiter needs to be tested. Um, read range, read range needs to be tested. And um, right now I'm just testing for correctness on good uh, inputs, so not error detection yet. Okay, read range. Obviously what I need to work on long term is getting error detection to work too, and um, improving aspects of it, because there are certain things I've already thought of that I could do better in the API. Read range. Um, replace range which is one of my favorite functions and here we have um, for inserting uh, tested for deleting untested and for um, um, for replacing, obviously. Um, so those are things I want to do. There's also all of the stuff about getting buffers and getting views that's untested. So I want to test um, loop over buffers. I want to test um, loop over views. Active buffer and active file view are both tested, so I'll just leave them off the list because they're completely done. Um, view set files in here. Okay. 
if I get all of that testing done, I have some to-dos that we can get to in the API stuff. So let me write those down over here. API-based themes we can get to someday. Um, I also want to do uh, file status. Um, save needs saving out of sync. Um, uh, seek string instead of delimiter seek backwards option um uh do replace range read range um in addition to all of that, I want to be able to um, at use range in all um, parameters in all applicable um, commands. Okay. So, Fucon, what do you mean replace range seems more like add to range? What do you mean? Replace range. You have a range of text. I'll show you the parameters. Replace range. Um, unless you're saying you're testing it and it doesn't seem to be doing what you think it should be doing. Um, replace range. You give it a start position and end position. That's the range you want to replace. And here's the string you want to replace it with. They don't have to be the same length or anything. This can be any range and this can be any string. And that one operation is provided because it encapsulates in one function all of the code for deleting, inserting, and replacing as one operation. Okay, so um, let's get to it. Um, loop over buffers. What's a useful thing to do when looping? Oh, I need to do um, one other one, which is uh, get buffer by name. Okay. Yes, but if I place it in the middle of some text, it just adds them. And st I'm not sure what you're talking about. It just adds them instead of replace text that is already there. It should definitely replace the text that's already there. Let's take a look. There could be a bug. It's supposed to replace the text that's already there. Um, so, for instance, um, let me try and use this for deleting since that was one of the things I want to do. So one thing I might want to do is like a um, control backspace implementation, right? Um, so let's look at what that will look like. Uh, custom command sig, uh, delete word. And for this one, what I want is a... Um, file view summary and a buffer summary. I start by getting the active file view because this is sort of just um, for editing the current buffer in some way. Did not want that to happen. Thank goodness there's an undo. Just pulled an obner and deleted uh, 183 lines of code. Uh, whoops. So anyway, um, app get active file view. If the view exists, then what I do is I um, I want to start by let's see I want to seek to a certain position. So um, something one of the command IDs. 
There we go. Okay, so I have um, some position where I am now, which is the um, like the views um, cursor position and uh, then what I want to do is do exec command command context um, seek um, alpha new oh, command id seek alphanumeric left Right, so that'll move my cursor all the way to the left. Um, and what I really want to do is stick to the no declare anywhere um, as harshly as I can. So position one, view dot cursor dot. Okay, then I need to refresh the buffer or the view. So refresh the view. Uh, refresh file view command context view so I can get the new cursor position cursor position okay now what I want to do is say something like uh, app buffer replace range command context I need to get my buffer still I haven't done that yet um, from position one to position two with an empty string and we'll see if empty string allows me to put in a null. It should. Um, I think it should. Um, like that should be allowed. And when I say should, I mean not only is that how it should work, but that's also what I think it w will work already, if I understand correctly. And we'll say we'll only do this if position one is actually less than position two, because hey, why not? Um, yeah, actually, you can do custom command stuff now that um, copies and pastes. That's something I should do a range for. So, like, copy and cut should both um, have range specifications, and paste should have a position specification for sure. I should add those. Um, yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, position one, position two, buffer replace range. So the point is this should delete everything between my cursor and the beginning of the alphanumeric word. Um, and after that, there's nothing else I need to do, I don't think, to make this behave well. Okay. So let's give this a shot. So I'm going to put my cursor right here. Oh, I haven't bound it to control backspace yet. Back, back, back. There we go. Um, this I'll put in with um, all of these guys. Bind, context. Well, I could kind of put it in down here, I think. Um, codes, back, defer, control. Um, let's see what's it called. Uh, I forget what the thing I just cut called was custom command cut line. This is now deprecated. Don't do it that way. That's stupid. Do it with new stuff. Use the new thing for it. Custom command. Build at launch location, open my files, open, delete word. Okay, so I want uh, my backspace to do delete word. Actually, that should be called backspace word. Backspace word. Okay. Um, codes back will do backspace word. Okay, that's good. Now let me run it and pop open basic and I'm gonna put it right here huh interesting 
So it looks like Fucon did find a bug. It didn't actually replace that text like it should have. So let us debug that. Good catch. Boom. Okay, first of all, what? Why did I not get a break there? Just now. Position one is. What are my position one and position two? I'm clearly getting something bad here. Position 1 is 166, position 2 is 160, if position 1, oh I'm an idiot, okay, okay, so delete word, delete word, backspace word, this should be position 2, this should be position 1. So if you kind of, it might be that you're, um, if you kind of, what do you mean you would like the ability to just add? You can just add. Replace can do anything. You can insert, you can replace, you can delete. If you really just want a different function to call, wrap it in a different function. Position two, position one, position one, position two. Good. Let's see. That still didn't work. Position one is strictly less than position two. Then, let's see, does the buffer exist? I never got the buffer. That's why. Okay. Silly me. Okay, so I need to get my buffer still. Buffer equals app get buffer command context um and uh view dot file ID. Basic Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, now my buffer exists. Okay. Okay, so I think that should do it. Yeah. Awesome. So if I take this out, is Strange Zach here? Because he's been asking for this, so now you've got it. Boop, 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 boop. If you want to replace, if you want to add something, just make start and end the same position. If start and end are the same position, it doesn't replace anything. So let me show you, for example, if I hit control and uh, the key that has a plus, but it's actually control equal, I insert two pluses. Okay. So the way that code looks is I replace range with position position uh, being the start and end spots right and then text is the plus plus that's the way to do it and the really nice thing about that is it means I only have to support one edit operation so the edit operation can be as complex as it wants because there's no need for duplication because all edits can be expressed in this uh, system um, all edits that you know happen in one location anyway no problem that's fine I don't mind helping out explaining it's sort of a it's a system I developed over time I didn't come up on it right away it takes time to figure out how to make it work this I can't count as one edit yet that's two edits so it takes two backs uh, undos to get rid of it and I have an idea that someday I'll have undo groups okay 
So anyway, um, we've just now tested that we can use this for deleting. All right, so what should I do next? Um, I want to have um, a hotkey that says switch to buffer, or switch to the compilation buffer um, in this spot. Uh, so custom.cpp um, delete word backspace word I mean okay do, do, do. Um, switch to compilation okay whoops let me do that again Boop. okay so the way um, I just need to do that one more time Boop. so the way that I want this to work is first it's going to get a buffer by n well it's going to get the active view as usual for things that manipulate the view so app get active file view from the com using these things then I want to say give me buffer summary and if the view exists then what I want to do is say okay and this will that means it'll only work if a file is open so let me leave um, a to do here Alan this will only work for file views for now extend the API a bit to handle a general view type which which can be manipulated at least enough to change it to other view to change the specific type of view and set files even when the view didn't contain a file. Okay. So right now you'll have to have a file open, but that's the typical case, so who cares. Okay, so if I have a view, then the next thing I do is I do get me my buffer, and the buffer is going to be get buffer by name, command context, and then the name is going to be uh, we'll call we'll put this name here and si name size there and I'll declare those up here so name is going to be the name I use for compilation buffer compilation uh, name size is going to be size of name minus one and then if the buffer exists, then what I want to do is say app um, view set file command context. Here's my view, and here's the file ID. Okay. Too many arguments, huh? Does that want a string? I can do that. Make string. Yes. I'm not sure that I want to force the string type though. Am I already doing that for other things? Yeah, I am. Okay, so we're forcing the string type. Who cares? So make string makes you a string. That's fine. Um, it compiles, so let's give it a run. Okay, so first of all, I haven't bound it to anything because I never do. So let's go look at where I have that again. Okay, so I want something that's uh, like switch to buffer. Alt M does compile. Alt comma seems like a good option for switch to compilation buffer. Modifier Alt. Uh, switch to compilation. Okay. Alt 
Awesome. Now, if I'm over here, and uh, right here, I'll go ahead and try to, let's, um, since it's Wednesday, let's open up this as a test case. Code, build it over here. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up app base. I'm gonna open up app color. And then I'm gonna say, all right, I wanna switch to compilation buffer uh, in, whoops, that's not right. Boom, I say, okay, I want to, um, I'm right here, I wanna switch to compilation buffer. Neato. Do this one on the other hand, doesn't work because there's no file as I predicted, but if I switch to app color, and that's not app color, app color. And I say, let's kill that with uh, out saving changes. And then I open build.bat and I hit alt comma, alt comma. One more time, alt comma, no, okay. So something's wrong, let's explore. Um, don't need you, do need you. Here we go. Alt comma. Alt. Oh, this isn't a code file. So I need to make sure that I bind some of these things in different places. So that isn't actually go with you guys. That needs to come down here. But there we go. Switch to compilation. Looks how it's going to work. Hello, hi, power 713. Welcome. It's going pretty well. Um. All right, so uh, get buffer by name works. View set file works. Okay. Okay, so now I want to do something like um, uh, I w so I've got the ability to move up and down, but this only moves me one at a time. I want to move ten lines at a time is what I want to do. So to do that. Um, Uh, yeah, so to do that for now, the rough thing I'll do, since I'm only doing line and by line and by character, is I'll switch over here, uh, custom.cpp, custom command sig, there we go, custom command sig, um, Uh, let's see. Move up 10 is going to be the name of this. And the way this will work is we could have written this by just saying, you know, Right, so this was always possible, but that's 10 commands. Can we do better? And the answer is, we can now. So we're going to get the file view. App get active file view, command context. Uh, if view exists. Um, if view exists, um, uh, first of all, hello, high power. I suggest you look at this thing that Miblo has just linked to you. Um, also, my main suggestion is to just like don't have, don't set your expectations high. I understand that like when you first start, it could take you years to get anything that looks even slightly cool um, I know like I probably you know coding for um we'll say nine years I probably wasn't doing anything cool and anything that I really liked um, or cared about like especially nothing that I look back on and go that was good in any way until like maybe a couple years ago 
um, if you if the things I really like are only like a layer less than a year now, right? So um, it can take actually a very long time before you're doing anything awesome. So you have to be willing to like get through that phase of like doing stuff and feeling like you're not doing a good job, but that's fine because it takes years to get like, and then there's a, a switch that'll happen, right? Eventually you'll put in enough time and suddenly it's good. It's, it's, it's not suddenly, but it's like, there's a huge increase very quickly once you start to get it down, but you have to take, take into account the fact that it's going to take a very long time before you get there. And it will seem like you're making no progress for a very long time. But you are. You have to go through that phase where it feels like you're not getting anywhere. It just takes time. And that's, like, I think the main thing, like, everything takes time. But the thing about programming is it takes time and it feels like you're not getting anywhere for a long time. So just expect that you will feel like you're not getting anywhere for a long time before you get anywhere. Right? And then you'll start to get somewhere. Um, a good program to write first. Uh, I don't know. You have to care about it. I can't tell you what to write first. Uh, you have to care about it. That's my suggestion. Pick something you care about. If you're just trying to program to program, then I don't know. Um, but like, I started programming because I liked to make game. Like, I wanted to make a game, and I cared about making the game. Uh, so I think you've got to care about something and program about that thing, even if it's just a tiny little weak version. All right. So anyway, um, view exists. Move up 10. Right. So now what we're doing is we're going to say app um, view set cursor. Um, and it's going to be uh, command context, the view, and seek line. I forget the name of this. Um, Types.h seek line char with the line number being we'll call it line and we'll the line being char index right and then I just need those two variables there line char index line equals and here this is a cool thing the cursor doesn't just contain a position it also contains all of the other useful things you might want so line char index I believe that is all correct oh, oh, oh. too few right and you want to know if I want you to set preferred X the answer is no when you're moving vertically you don't set preferred X usually Um, if view exists, line char index, seek line, right. Then the thing I want to do is say line minus 10, right? So there is move up. I'll also do move down 10. And the only difference is for move down 10, I'm going to add 10 to the line number. So you see, I'm taking the old line number, neither adding or subtracting 10. Okay, so move up, moving up and down. So where is my move up and move down code right now? Okay, so do I have an alt version of up down? I don't think I do. No. Okay, so we'll add this in right here bind context codes up and defer alt um, move up 10 and this one here will be moved down 10 All right, let's give this a, a whirl. 
and this is this one is only really good for proportional fonts. I'd have to make a different one for um, I would have to make a different one for um, uh, what's the word? Um, this is only good for monospace fonts, I should say. I would have to make a different. I would have to improve the API a little bit so that you could handle proportional font navigation a little better. But there you go, Miblo. I'm using Alt up and down to move ten lines at a time. It preserves the X of my cursor as I do that. Um, no, it doesn't. What did it just do? Why did it ruin? What did it just do? That shouldn't have happened. Um, zero parenthesis. Okay, so when I do set cursor with a zero, that doesn't look totally right. So let me actually step through that. You know, using this API, I could implement number changing. I think like this API is what I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase most of four coder in terms of this API now. Um, like the core of it is I'm gonna push everything out of the core and into the outer layer that just talks in this language I'm creating for talking about buffers, um, and it'll be just easy for me to pump out stuff for everyone. Miblo wants number changing. Cuber Caleb wants go back to previous buffer. Everyone wants a thing, and it's like now I've just got. I've got it all into a simple little language I can create all of it. Um, okay, so um do, do alt well let's start right here for instance. Let's per see if it preserves X now. That did but it stops preserving X eventually, so why? View set cursor. So first we make the seek, which is fine. Then we come in here. The view exists. The file view, there we go. Cursor equals, we compute the cursor, which is working just fine. If set preferred X, Okay, so preferred x is 146. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for, for that to work, what I would have to have, what I'm missing actually is the ability to get the preferred x. So let's add that to the, to the API. Um, um, that's pretty big. File view. Uh, summary. Oh, that I see it now. It's right up here. I want the preferred set preferred X, except I don't want the set. There we go. So now what I need to do is everywhere in here that f uh, does fill view summary, which I luckily decided to put into a function just for this reason. I just go file view preferred x. There we go. Of course, preferred x is supposed to be a float, I think. Um. <coughs> yeah, okay. So that's not mega helpful. Um, the other thing I could do is say that I'm going to expand this with, um, yeah, let's just do this, float line height, pop over here, view um, line height equals file view, now I have to remember how to get like font heights and stuff, I think this is in file view because it's such a pain. Um, line height. Where do I get line height? View font height. Right. Awesome. Font height. Okay. Alright. Oh no. From I32 to float. Okay, so line height actually needs to be uh, an int. Alright. Measured in pixels, but it's an int. Okay, and now I can come over here and say um, that we're not going to do this as line and char. 
as I was initially saying, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do this as x and y. The more powerful version for most purposes, but not all. Skip, like, jump to error wants line and character, as it turns out. Um, just delete all of you. Seek. Um, shoot, and this is where I need to know whether or not we're wrapped. So let's go ahead and just do seek xy and assume that I'll get that worked out too. Okay, so we're going to make some additions to the API because I'm bumping into them already. It looks like they're pretty important. So maybe we can hopefully get this done today. Um, nope, four coder does not hot load DLLs yet. That's on the, the long. That's on the long to do list, not the short one. In case I didn't say before. Strange Jack, the new one. Oh, you made a. Did you? Well, you didn't have the custom API yesterday, Strange Zach. Um, but what, I, what he's saying is, uh, uh, that you can do it with the buffer API now, so it doesn't affect your cursor, um, and it's more nice. Okay, anyway, um, or it doesn't affect your mark, is what I mean to say. Your mark can stay where it was now. Um, yes, so anyway, um, to get the X and Y, here's what we're going to do. It's in the cursor. Cursor. Oh, shoot, again, I don't know which one to use. I guess the cursor, okay, so the view, oh damn, that's annoying. So the view should really have, does the view tell me if it's wrapped or not? Um, custom.cpp, no, file view, not cpp. File view, doot, doot, there we go. Um, unwrapped lines, okay. Cool. So I'm going to put that in custom dot h and unwrapped lines. All right. Um, in forehead dot cbp um, view unwrapped lines equals file view unwrapped lines. Doop. Okay. So I'm just going to need to introduce a buffer seek here and here. Um, do, 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 do. Seek equals seek x, y, 0. And then it's unwrapped x, y, 0 versus wrapped x, y, 0. And then it's that, um, else is that, boop. Boop. Okay. View dot unwrapped lines. There we go. That could definitely stand to have a helper function for it, but we'll skip it for now. Um, underscore x. All right, so that gets me my seek. Um, but first I need to compute x and y. And that's going to be C e x equals view cursor dot unwrapped x unwrapped y. Um, wrapped x wrapped y although that's not technically correct I'll change tell you how we need to change it in a second what we actually want is not this we want view preferred x for the x value it's just the y value that we're going to read from the cursor da, da, da. all right and then I want to take unwrapped y and do plus 10 oh wait this is up so minus 10 times uh, the view's line height. 
boop, 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 boop. Strange Zach, there's no way this is the last big o API overhaul, but luckily this isn't really an overhaul, it's just an addition. Like, all old things will basically work. Um, I did break the few things by renaming them again, but those are small. So clemian has got some interesting ideas, and I've definitely got some plans for this. So one thing the API is going to do someday is it's going to expose all kinds of information about all of the commands you've done. This means macros are just a, a function of the API, right? The API will expose the language for making macros a thing. It will also sub expose all sorts of other stuff I want to do, like it's a meta command data that will tell you the frequency of how much you use certain commands, and from that you can make you can find more optimal um, binding configurations for yourself um, uh, in addition to that having a history of what commands you've recently done can be used as a sort of heuristic so that you can do series of commands that um, so th that future commands can look at that series and go oh I need to do something different based on previous things that have happened for instance if the last thing, if the last thing that has happened was someone wrote the word struct and then some other identifier, you'd be able to see that by looking through the command history. And um, if you didn't want to do that by reading the buffer for some reason, I guess you'd probably do that using reading the buffer. Let me think of, there's definitely examples. So if you have, um, if you do control arrow, for instance, which you could set it up is so that after the first control arrow that jumps to a blank line, that all ups, downs, lefts, and rights are treated as if they have a control after that uh, attached to them until you do something else. So you can look at the previous command or previous commands and change which command, change the behavior of your command based on that. So that's a part of the API in my head in the future. Yeah, strange deck. I removed bind me entirely um, and replaced it with just the same thing but named bind. If it's a, too much of a pain, you can just define bind me bind and then you don't have to rewrite your code. But I was sick of having my own code. like Just like Casey, I would write bind and then put the me afterwards every single time. And I was like, this is too much of a pain. So I just changed it to bind. Um, but I'm still not going to respect lock-in for a long time. Like If I decide that everything's wrong and I need to change it, I will. Um, I just don't don't um, just don't expect me to like respect lock in for a long time. Is all I'm gonna say. And by respect lock in, I mean like I'm not gonna treat it like a publicly facing API, like as if I'm a window or Microsoft who never changes an API once it's in. Uh, yeah, you could easily use something like that Miblo to build up multi-character bindings. I bet you could already do that using something kind of like what Casey did. I am also going to add um, just proper support for uh, hierarchical bindings that will allow modes to be just much more easily defined, more naturally defined, um, uh, and more naturally like manipulated. Although, you know, his mode is fine until you want to add... His current mode system is great until you want to add more than an... an Two mo until you want more than two modes because um, then every time you add a mode you have to change all your if else's so your macros change and then all the places where you instantiate the macro changes blah 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 so there will someday be better binding um, it won't really be different in the binding like this system of binding will work it'll just be in addition you'll be able to do like a hierarchy thing but as Kalimian is saying you could already do multi key binds um, In fact, what I once I give you memory, once I give you access to memory, you could basically build up that whole like Vim language. Someone I could, I would probably do this actually. Find someone who's a Vim pro and have them implement Vim in Forcoder, like literally, right? Just like insofar as is doing now, I would say, hey, you, I don't know, maybe Andrew, uh, 
wants to do it anyone who knows vim really and who can uh who who feels up to the task i would just be like you you're in charge of writing the vim the the vi binding version of procoder custom and i would make that an official part of the the distribution too okay so anyway that's a fun chat but i want to i want to see this in action so if that's building then let's see let's see um you go there you go there all right put this here alt 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 it looks like it's working to me now because it went low and then stopped going low after that went back to high alt alt low high yeah all right so that's working now do, 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 do. moving 10 lines at a time that is do 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 whoops do 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 and it's working with proportional fonts correctly and everything okay so that's cool um, like I said, I didn't want helpers for that stuff, so let's do helpers now. Um, so, the helpers, where should they go? They should go in helper, well, one of them should go in here, types.h. Um, seek unwrapped, seek wrapped, static buffer seek, um, seek xy, float x, float y, int round down int unwrapped all right and then if unwrapped no not unwrapped I just if unwrapped then uh, result equals uh, seek unwrapped x y round down else um, Wrapped. Uh, da, do, boo, do. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. Fucon, I'm going to release all this before Handmade Hero. Um, if it's not too buggy, uh, I'll release it on Handmade Hero or before Handmade Hero. If not. Um, if I don't make that deadline, that'll be tomorrow morning that you get it then. Um, I could definitely paste bin it for you, that particular one, right after the stream if I'm not going to post it. But if I am going to post it tonight, I'll just, just get it then. Alright, so that's nice. Now we can just do, instead of all that this just becomes seek x y x y zero and then we do view dot unwrapped lines right okay boo boo so now we don't need this seek local okay and um now about this x y thing that i think i'll put in helper at the bottom. I don't have bottom because everyone thinks that my top bottom comments are weird so I don't put them in public code. Alright. So what I want is something like um, Uh, float um, get y uh, file view summary view and that will go like this if view unwrapped lines else y equals view uh, wrap 
cursor dot wrapped. Well, instead of this, let me put a full cursor pointer here. Yeah, so um, what cursor do you care about? And are we talking about unwrapped lines or not? And then I'll extract one for you so that you don't have to do... Uh, now this seems... This seems silly. Okay. Um, we don't need you or you. Um, X is just always preferred X. So that can go there. Yes, and then this is always applied, so let me pull it out. And do Y. Um minus equals y uh, plus equals and with this API you could implement find and replace you could implement um, well find and replace would be tricky you'd have to make it like the way find and replace would work is you'd go like this right you'd go um, uh, something like well yeah since you don't have access to interactive I mean, what you could do is kind of funny. You'd go, I want to replace all, you know, instances of um, plus 10 times view dot line height with um, uh, nothing at all, with just a semicolon, boom, boom, and then you'd hit, you know, a command, and it would parse all of the code that there. So you can, like, write some stuff parse it and then delete it out of the buffer right so that's gone and then apply it right so you could do stuff like that um, which I think is kinda cool alright so we have move up down and I've worked on the helpers a little bit to do Anyways, these things all work, so that's done, that's done. Alright, so we haven't done anything about reading buffers very carefully yet, and we're not looping over any of them. So, um, let's see, what can I do with a loop over buffers? Well, what I could do is say that um, I want to visit each buffer, and... hard to imagine actually. I want to visit each buffer and seek through that buffer for um, a certain character. It's hard to imagine a good use for this right now. What could you do with a loop over at all buffers? Well, 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 if you had a bunch of memory you could loop across all you can look across all buffers and find the smallest one if you want to do that you could um, check their names uh, to see if any of them match the string this ah okay so that'll let us test a bunch of stuff okay so here's my proposal um, this doesn't actually have anything to do with looping over buffers, but it's a cool idea. Custom not CPP save. Don't be unsaved. Okay. So here I am. I highlight that, and then I hit something. Actually, better than that. I don't even surround it with my. I just go. My cursor is on this word. It then said. I say. Do do. Okay. So I'll go back until I find a quote, I'll go forward until I find a quote, take that range, read it, that is a file, look it up by name, yeah that's a pretty cool one. So for that to work the first thing I'm gonna have to do is extend this API like I was saying originally that I would do. So let's look at delimiter 
and right now the extension that I want is I have a start position I have a delimiter I have the delimiter character I have the out position I want to know whether it's uh, a forward seek or not forward search okay and that's you know raising the issue that these are starting to get kind of long and just hard to fit on the screen um, I'm gonna ignore that for now but I'll take care of that off off screen sometime because I don't want it to get to the point where you're like trying to read the API and it's like not even correct right you know, it's not even fittable while I'm here I should open up the um, Um, the super readme and fix the docs as I'm going. So, seek position. Um, let's see. Replace range. That's correct. Refresh file. I've already changed one thing. Okay, seek to a particular. No, that refers to whether line mapping is on. Both things are valid. To remove, to remove the Y up or down a whole line, add view dot line height. Views. Okay. Okay. So now, um, what we want to do is returns a file view summary return from the active panel. Um, it's around here somewhere. Yeah, replace re re delimiter. Okay. Start from see seek. Seeks. Okay. Um, seek forward. If seek forward is set to true, we'll do it this way. If seek forward is set to true, seek until the first occurrence of the limb pointer out is filled with the position of the delimiter. If the end of the file is reached, out is filled with the size of the file. If seek forward is set to false, seeks backward until the first occurrence of Delim. The pointer out is filled with the position of the delim delimiter if the beginning of the file is reached out is filled with zero all right that's cool now I need to go visit um, forehead.cpp forehead.cpp there we go let's get you right there make sure everything is good all right awesome so now um, uh, Let's see, let's see. Uh, um, seek to limit her. Um, 
seek delimiter. There it is. Okay. So what's happening right now pretty much will work. We just have to say if forward forward search if seek forward else now I need to pop over here and check custom.h for the actual name if seek forward buffer seek delimiter um, buffer reverse seek delimiter and now we just need to visit buffer abstract delimiter do 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 reverse seek delimiter now this is a backify um, and so then we don't care about size at all and we say look buffer backify loop Buck buffer backify good buffer backify next buffer from position all the way to zero loop loop and okay while position is greater than or while position is greater than or equal to well it was greater than zero minus minus position update equals delim break return position awesome So that gives the delimiter seeky stuff more power. So now in custom.cpp, let's write this new function idea. Custom command sig um, um, open. Well, what, I don't know if I can actually open a file in the quotes. Let's just try. Switch to file in quotes. Okay. So we're going to have some uh, text buffer that um, we'll call that the file name buffer, or I'll just call that file name underscore for some reason. I'll tell you what my reason is in a sec. 512. Uh, let's just like be more strict. Be like, no, we don't expect that much. File name equals make fixed with string file name underscore. There we go. Um, okay, I'm going to need a um, file view summary here. I'm going to need a buffer summary here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say take the um, view get active file view if that view exists um, let's see wait hold on let me do that properly Boop. Um, if file view if view exists, then x equals. No, I don't just read that code, Alan. Think. What are you doing? You want to get the buffer so that you can seek around in it. App, get buffer, command context, um, view dot file id. If the buffer exists. I should really be checking that the buffer is ready before I edit it. And the buffer is ready. Are there places where I checked that the buffer exists but what didn't check if it was ready? If the buffer exists, then go for it. Okay, so it looks like I've been good about that. Okay, good. So if the buffer exists and it's ready, then we need um, int start and end positions. And the way this works is I go start equals app um, buffer seek delimiter.
command context, here's the buffer. I want you to start from position, which I'm going to define in a minute. I want you to keep going till you find a quote. Man, that's hard to read. Okay, so I find a quote. God damn, this font is terrible. Those two things look identical. But they're not even close. I just need to take a minute and look at this, because look at those. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three. <laughs> it's kind of amusing. Okay. Uh, seek forward. And that will be my end position. Similarly, seek backwards. And that will be my start position. Okay. And dupe, dupe. Um, all of these things technically return true or false about their failure or not, but I'm not doing anything about that. <laughs> Fucon wants um, app set color theme. Um, there's going to be theme stuff. Look, I, 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 I'll show you how much there's going to be theme stuff. App API based themes. But it's going to be better than just setting which theme. Um, I could add that, but I'm not going to add that now. I'm going to wait because I want to give I want to give that more treatment than that, and the whole theme system is going to change um, to support um, sort of dynamicness in the theme. So you'll be able to have um, like the normal theme stuff that we already have, um, where you just pick stuff, and then I want to have you know like highlighting things via regular expression, blah 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 blah. <laughs> you just want to set it to handmade here on startup. Fair enough. That makes sense. Um, Casey does need something for changing what theme is active. And I could say, for now, change to the handmade hero theme and the four coder monospace theme because they look exactly the same except for colors. So you just have two modes that change all the colors between the two uh, modes that you're in. It'd be a pretty big change, but. Um, I could maybe try to fit that in. I want to be done within a half hour, though. So, um, let's let's say let's say maybe this sometime this week, because um, Casey does need something for changing stuff uh, that's sort of quick and easy. So that seems, and a lot of people want the ability to not use my theme. I don't know what people don't seem to like. I, I, maybe I think I I don't know. I I think it's my. I mean, I really like the theme. Obviously, I use it, but most people, uh, I don't know if I'm just like used to it from staring at it for so long. But so a lot of people look at it and don't uh, totally love it, and I get that. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. So custom.cpp. All right, so this gives me my range. Now what I want to do is say, look, if start or if end minus start is less than file name dot uh, memory size. <laughs> Fair enough. You want monospace font? That's also a consideration. You know, there is this one for that. If you must have monospace fonts, God, it's so big. Look at it. it's crazy. Maybe I've just got it set too big because I've got it at the same size as everything else, but it's crazy. Yeah, Miblo, this whole thing is kind of going to um, go like I want to make those hexes right there editable, but I think it'd just be easier to have like a special text file system um, for this. You do have the option to go here to RGB and type in these hex numbers. Oh man, they're off. I didn't know they were off. This, like I said, this whole thing is sort of um, deprecated at this point because I'm not maintaining it. But you can come in here and like change these things by typing in hex numbers here, right? So. See, here's the thing. Everyone says stuff like monospace looks less squished together. To me, it looks crazy spread out. It looks like it's unnecessarily spread out. 
It's probably because I've been staring at proportional for uh, such a long time. Um, but this, like, there's like giant. Ga Why do the dots have so many, so much space on either side, right? This is what I'm thinking to myself when I look at this. Why is that F so wide? That's like a weirdly wide F. Why is this L taking up so much space? It, I don't know. It feels spread out to me. Okay, end minus star is less than memory size. Then we are able to app buffer rearrange command context out of that buffer. I want to go from start to end, and I actually want start plus one and minus one. So if end minus one, start plus one. So this whole distance here. Well, let's just do end uh, minus minus end plus plus start because we want to ignore the quotes basically. So start end. I want to fill um, file name dot string. Now I feel like I don't want to use strings for this. I'll just do file name, and then this right here will be a uh, size of file name. And then I want to fill file name. Okay, we'll actually put like a size right here and do size equals this, right? And then once I've got that read range, I, what I can do is say, okay, now what I want to do is abandon the buffer I used to have. Who cares about that buffer? I want to buffer, whoops, I want to. I don't have control backspace just yet. I want to get buffer by name, command context, um, file name size. And then finally, if that buffer exists, whoops, 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 boop, there we go. I want to app view set file command context view buffer dot file id awesome hey hey shut up position is undeclared you're right position position equals view dot cursor dot position Yeah, insofar as the number one problem I have with um, with using proportional is that I don't have code formatting, um, so that I get like nastiness where you can't ever line something up. Like when you've got some stuff and then you've got line other stuff, and it's like you can't ever. It's like they're off by a pixel. Why I can't make it perfect, and it drives me crazy. That um, that's actually really annoying to me. Once it's got code formatting, there, I'll, I I don't know any reason why you won't why you wouldn't use this. Like I said, I love it so much that I'm okay with the thing I just complained about. Okay. So if that's building, which I believe it is, it is not. But let's try again. Get buffer by name. Oh, make string. Do do. Okay, now to test this, I'll need to go into code. I'm going to open up forehead.cpp. I'm going to open up fileview.cpp. I'm going to come over here and open up apptarget.cpp because apptarget.cpp has those. Now I can go, where is this? Aha, 
And damn it, I didn't bind it to a key though. I have to bind it to a key first. Duh, duh, duh. Okay. <sighs> Silly. Okay. Um. So let's go down to my file. Okay. Um. This is sort of a Cody thing, though. I'm gonna put it up here. Not Cody, as in like a person, but Cody, C O D E, dash Y, type of thing. I'm gonna say that if I ever Alt One. Actually, let's see. If I push Alt with this hand. Let's okay. Fine. It'll be Alt One. Fair enough. Then I want to. What's the name of this thing? Quotes. Switch to file in quotes. Switch to file in quotes. Oh, I've just got another idea of what I'll do to make this even better. Run. Code forehead.cdp. FileView.cdp AppTarget.cdp And to the bottom Alt 1 Alright, so it's not working. That's good. Something to debug. Switch to Compilation Switch to file in quotes. Ping, open, forehead, whoops, ping, boom. Let's do it this way. Code, custom, no, forehead.cpp, fileview.cpp, app target.cpp, fileview, alt one. There we go. The view exists, we get the buffer, the buffer exists. Position 771, we seek to the right, 784, to the left, 766, 783, da -da, size is 16. Okay, I think that sounds about right. So that'll fit in there. We do read range. We come in here, the buffer exists, we get that file is not a dummy, the file is ready. We get the size of the buffer. The buffer is a thousand three characters long. We make sure that everything's uh, squared away. It is, so the result we stringify into there. What did we get? Forehead file view dot cp. Ah. Fair enough. Switch to file in quotes. It's the length. We actually want the end to stay where it is. Okay. Because that's inclusive exclusive. I should add that to the docs. Start. Oh wait, that's not where the docs are. Where are my docs? Super aid me. There we go. Uh, read range fills half the buffer. text that the buffer contains in the range start to end. Okay. Do 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 File name forehead file view dot size seventeen. Get buffer by name. 
Uh oh. Forehead file view .cdp? You didn't find anything? What's the size? 17. Make string. Forehead. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, let's think. 8 plus 3 is 11. Plus 2 more is 13. Plus 4 more is 17. That's the right size. So when I come in here and I make this string of length 17 and I come in here to look it up alright find the in the table get the hash 17 alright I just want to make sure that all of the C's make sense oh shoot I know what's wrong get file by name needs to use full source paths not okay so I need to add that to the docs right now buffer seek delimiter if okay buffer read range buffer get by name whose um, way to look a buffer up by live name the short name shown on the top bar turn the buffer whose full source path exactly matches string of live name Buffers created that are not associated with files, such as boop, compilation, have their source path, full source path name set to the same value as their live name therefore you can get a compilation buffer with this API by the name compilation okay so what I want to add someday, not today, is the ability to get that by a short name instead of by the long. Will the API also support making buffers on startup? Yes. Okay, so Fucon uh, asks, will the API also support making buffers on startup? And he has a more specific use case, which is that he wants to put a compilation buffer in a particular place. It's actually going to be even better than that. Um, right now, all of the this is what I call implicit mode panels. I'm working on something that I call explicit mode panels. In explicit mode, you don't create the panels yourself, or at least you don't have to. Once you start dividing and moving them around yourself, like basically dividing and destroying panels, you're in you're doing implicit mode. Um, but in explicit mode, you write code that looks something like this. I'll just do a quick. Um, Wait, let me try something. Do, do. Void foo. Boo, boo. Okay. So here's what the code would look something like. Um, it's been a while since I've came up with for since I've worked on this API, but it would be something like um, set panel layout. Um, So this particular thing I have right here, horizontal split. Um, let's see. I want the top one to be labeled my um, comp panel. I want it to take up about uh, 0.15 of the space it has, and then underneath that, I want a vertical split. Um, on the left, I want my left panel 
uh, 0.5f and my right panel. Doot, doot, doot. And then somewhere I've got define uh, comp panel as 10, whatever. Left panel as 0. Right panel as 1. And that would describe this thing, and then you just use these numbers, these unique numbers that you give to each panel, to say, I want to talk about this panel, right? I want to talk about that panel. And so what you could do is, on startup, you'd say, all right, here's the panel layout I want. And so you'd set it, and then you'd say, all right, I want to assign to this panel this buffer right now. Finally, what you could do is say, all right, given some other you know, callback or something, you go, all right, I want to switch to a different layout. I don't want my compilation panel right now. So then you just have the vertical split, like so. And there you have it. Right now you've got this um, without your compilation. And then if I build again, it would switch back to the one with, so you could switch back and forth to different layouts that are like explicitly defined. And you no longer have to manually split and move things around. You just define the layouts that you're going to want and then you have your command switch between them, right? And then what will happen is if I query for the comp panel and it's not there, it'll say, hey, there's no comp panel open right now. Um, you're not in the right layout. And so then it'll return like a does not exist, basically, and nothing will happen, right? Uh, if you've written your code to check that the, the views exist. Anyway, um, so that's just a thought that's something that's coming down all since I'm back on the API, the API is like my favorite thing to work on because every time I improve the API, the whole like what you can do on the um, application side versus custom side, it's shifting things to the custom side, which is like the long term um, second most important thing I can do besides providing interesting tech on the application side. Right, I want the application to just provide modules of useful tech and then expose them to basically do whatever the hell you want on custom side. Uh, I want to expose even GUI stuff on custom side someday so that you can just program this thing to do whatever you want it to do. Okay, so anyway. If I've got 15 minutes left, I want to get this working. What's it going to take? I've got the short version of the name. I've got the buffer. The buffer should have a way of getting its long name, right? So let's look at my buffer summary. Yeah, I've got the f file name of the current buffer. So what I can do is um, um, I'll call this short file name. Oops. File name. Short file name. Oops. Short. Copy. Short. Short. And then I want a file name which will be longer. And I'll have a file name string like I had before. Make fixed with string file name underscore. Now using my file name, what I can do is say, well, I'm gonna engage my um, handy dandy, um, I'll put those inside the, the if right here. All right, I can engage this handy um, string API of mine, string library thing I've got. So, um, I want to copy into the file name from the buffer dot um, file name buffer dot file name len make string okay and then I want to um, I forget the name of it. String that h um, path truncate to path of directory file name and 
and then I want to append onto the file name the short file name with this size make string and now um, actually all of that has to happen before this gets to the buffer by file name right and then buffer app get buffer by file by name I don't care about you at all I care about file name right and so that I don't start using declare anywhere accidentally we'll put that there so we read range into the short file name we copy that there there and there we look up the buffer here if the buffer exists we set it okay so it's going to assume that it's in the same directory as the currently opened file for now which is how includes tend to work anyway 281 file name ew god damn it file um custom.h and the last of the consts leave because they're a pain they're a gigantic pain code for a dot cpp um, file view dot cpp app target dot cpp file view alt one okay so he comes through here we get in the short file name this guy here and then we copy into you this full name here, app target, right? We truncate to the path, which means we're shorter, and then we append, and now it says forward file view dot cpp, p, 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 but that's okay, because I'm not going to need an old terminator for this API. Aha! Uh Doop! -huh. <laughs> oh, man. So alt one app target again alt one okay so that's working which is super awesome now what I want to do is say look else let's just extend this one more whoops 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 boop there we go um, I want to exec command command context, command ID, interactive open, and I want to um, push parameter app command, whoops, command context, um, par, pars are around here somewhere, um, target buffer name, par, target buffer name um, and then I'll put in right here the file name let's see if that's correct okay well how do I push okay how do I show me um, open my files for instance literal okay so you just want me to expand the string well if that's what you want then screw that push parameter const char value uh, parameter okay so here's what I want to do their string d um, I just want to call this expand string. Is anyone using dir string anywhere? G two nine zero file name expand string 
boop. There we go. So now let's give this a whirl. So say I'm in my code app target, and I go, all right, what do I want to do today? I want to look at the menu view, Alt-1. Ah, oh, it didn't work. OK, so let's find out why. Boop. Boop. Boop, boop. Whoops. Boop, boop. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. All right, what do we got? File name length 30. What is the file name? Forward menu view.cpp. We truncate the path. Forward code. And now it says forward file name. Forward to do. Does it exist? It does not. So I push the parameter on. And then we go do interactive open, which goes through a couple layers of stuff which I should look at someday and see if it's all completely necessary. I loop across parameters until I find, uh-oh. Par name, huh? OK, so what I did wanted was not par target vec buffer name. It's just par name, apparently. I don't know what par target buffer name means. I should look. See if I have any examples of using par target buffer name. Ah, for compilation. Gotcha. Target buffer name for compilation. Fair enough. That should just be name so that it's not um, an over, an undersubscribed, an underloaded. It's not overloaded, it's underloaded term. app target all right so say I want to look at the color view for instance alt one boop 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 does not exist okay hey look at this so now what I can do is I just open up my app target and if I'm here and I'm looking at stuff and I'm like all right you know what I need to look at meta real quick just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah, it's so cool. Yes. Okay. I don't have a command for that right now, Fukan. He's like uh, uh, Fukan's asking if there's a command for creating a uh uh empty buffer with par target name. I'm actually going to change that. That doesn't really need to exist. I'm just going to call that name. Um, custom.h target buffer name doesn't need to exist. Anywhere that I have grievance because of that, I will now address it. 1914 name A Fool's Duty asks, what's the driving motivation for creating four coder? I can't say, I don't know. I mean, I could this sort of gets into a um, a conversation I was having with myself and people recently but ultimately I just the main real reason is I just really like it for some reason I really like working on it because I do like I, I can't really exp I think that people just sometimes think too much about like what's how is this actually important and what they really mean is how is this important in my value system well in mine it's just fun to make it but uh, putting that aside if I had to say why should this why should this have broad appeal, I think it's because um, it's an example of something that's like very simple in terms of this isn't like I'm not compressing stuff, I'm not like dealing with 
crazy video codecs, it's a simple format. It shouldn't be hard to make it really good. And I'm just trying to like actually do that because nothing else just like takes it seriously. Like let's just do it good without going nuts. And so you've got things like Vim and Emacs where you're just, it's just like they went totally nuts on in terms of like we've got all these crazy awesome ideas and it's like it's not that complex why is it why does this seem so complex you're going like you're iterating and, and going off in some crazy direction the thing you needed to do was so um it's, it's like simple like you just needed to expose some basic abilities can you turn up the mic audio ooh it's up all the way is it quiet? Well, I don't think I have time to deal with that. If it is, um, let's see. I'm almost out of time. I want to wrap this up and, and post some the changes. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see. We've got seek delimiter tested, read range tested. Um, yeah, so basically everything got tested. I feel good about this. Um, Compared to everything else, can you hear like background noises or something? Oh, I see. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm out of time, so I'm going to leave it for now, I think. Yeah. Um, but let's see which things I didn't get to that I wish I did. Um, I really want to... Okay, there's one thing I want to do before time is up because it's really important. Um, 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 uh, da, 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 da. Copy. I'm looking for a command called copy. There it is. Forehead.cpp. I'm looking for a demand command called delete range. There it is. Oh, I don't even have delete range doing it. So which one does it? Um, auto tab range. There it is. Yes, this stuff right here. So what I want to do is say that I think this is a pretty good place to insert this. Um, internal void um, get parameter get range from parameters. Um, Command parameter param command parameter end. Let's see. Um, int start int end. Okay. Int result equals zero. Return result equals equals two. Um, let's change the name of that to count. All right. Now what I'll do is I'll take this par clear blank lines. Ugh. The only problem is it's like I don't know how I want to do this yet. I haven't totally figured out what I should do. I think for now I'm going to just duplicate the code in order to get this up and running and then I'll do something smarter some other day. Actually, I know what I should do. Duh, I know what I should do. Um, it's going to have to wait though. So, yeah, all of this code. I want you in copy. And then this code I want you in copy there we go to do Alan deduplicate all right do -do. copy will have it Um, cut will have it. Okay. And 
lines. The other thing is we don't need clear blank lines in these ones. That's why I didn't want to. That's why I just. That's why I didn't want to just do a function because these are a little different. And I don't want to necessarily have to iterate over something twice on this case to make that work. Okay. So um, I don't have time to get that into the documentation or to make examples of it. I'm just going to leave that as it is. In theory, you can now cup, copy and cut from manually specified ranges. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, you know, there should just be API directly connecting you to the clipboard, maybe. I don't know. Um, but that's it. That's all I've got time for. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to post um, an update uh, for people who um, have access to the API. I'm going to make another post um, with all of the uh, fixes to the doc and upgrades to the API I've made in the last little bit. Uh, thank you all so much for coming and supporting Forcoder, and make sure to, uh, you know, keep up because we're about to have a Linux version come out, I think, and we're about to get um, lots of new new things coming very soon. So, see you guys around.